Rhett Lashley, Southern Methodist, is embarking on his journey as a Power 4 program for the first time. And there's a lot of excitement around the Southern Methodist program because they were damn good last year. They won the American. They had us thinking that they might be that squad in there getting into the New Year's Six Bowl. And then they reminded us that actually they didn't care because they lost to Boston College. That's not true, but still, you lost to Boston College. And I remember watching that game going, that ain't the Southern Methodist I know. I realized that Preston Stone was out for that, but, you know, it ain't like Kevin Jennings is ain't nobody. We, we learned that in November. That dude could sling it. And even now, we're talking about Preston Stone probably beginning the season as the number one, but knowing how important it is to have a really good number two and both of those guys being Dallas area dudes. But it feels like Preston Stone, who got to announce that he was committing to Southern Methodist on NBC at All-American Bowl when Sonny Dykes was still there, it, it, that's, that's your talisman. That's your guy, right? And I think they can get behind that. And then when you look at some of the pieces he's got, Jalen Knighton, Kamar Wheaton, my goodness, Kamar Wheaton, and Jordan Hudson, the offense is going to have what it needs. And Rhett Lashley has been one of the favorites around here at, at Tulsa for some time. Like, it, it was touch and go there between whether or not it was going to be Philip Montgomery or Rhett Lashley being the head coach of the University of Tulsa. Ends up working out just fine for Lashley, who has since not only become head coach at Southern Methodist, done a damn good job, but he's brought De'Eric King over from his time at Miami, and they've been a really good duo creating that quarterback room that is able to sustain. Well, that's sort of a that's sort of a loss, right? You still go eight and zero in the American, but I've got them ranked right now at number thirty two in my ultimate one thirty four, for which I'm using to base a lot of these discussions that we're having, right? It strikes me that if they were not in the ACC, I would still probably have them ranked at 32 because their schedule, while difficult, doesn't change what I think about them. Like, the win total for them is 8. I'm willing to take the over on that, and one of those is because I expect them to stop a mud hole in Nevada and walk it dry. I don't mind telling you, Nevada is a 28.5 point underdog in this game for a damn good reason. But it also means that we expect Southern Methodist to make a statement by getting to your second string by the, end, by the beginning of the third quarter at a minimum. You want to get guys as much of an opportunity as you can to play and to prove. And if you still got some battles, you want to take those things in before you figure out who you are, do that now. Because you got Florida State on September 28th, and that game feels like the one that's going to define what your season is actually about. Because as I'm looking through the rest of their schedule, I'm going, okay, Y'all got a lot here, but you know what? Southern Methodist fans are about it this year. Like, they have sold out season tickets. They are setting records for the amount of interest around that program. I mean, you got to take it back to the Pony Express with Eric Dickerson uh, before the last time that we were really talking about Southern Methodist as a national player in college football. And there's not really a whole lot to, to show against Nevada, who I got ranked at 115th out of 134 teams. Jeff Schultz. Uh, Jeff Coe, excuse me, uh, coached at, you know, coached at Texas, also coached a team to the playoffs in Montana State 2019. I'm also looking at the guy he's got back there in Chuba Purdy. Yes, that is Brock Purdy's little brother and also a former Florida State Seminole. There's just a job there. They're, 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 it's a job. Like, it's rebuild right now. The over-under for them on the season is two and a half. It's hard to look at the Mountain West Conference and see them as a player in it. But, again... If you can come out with a W or you can show us some life, we probably feel better about moving you up in the discussion for your Mountain West Conference Championship. And one of the cool things about the college football playoff is the highest ranked group of five champion is getting an automatic bid to the qual uh, to the playoff. You can do that if you're Nevada. You just got to run the table as if that's something uh, simple to do. But this is going to be more about what SMU is capable of. This is going to be more about what SMU ceiling might look like. So if they go drop 65 on Nevada, we're still going to think about them the way that we think about them now, which is being a challenger in the ACC. But if they are in a two-score game, Lord help them, a one-score game in the fourth quarter, we're going to draw conclusions from that as well. I, that, I don't think that 12-team playoff has put that away. We're going to look at who you played and how you played them, and that's going to matter, right? And then we're talking about, you know, playing Houston Christian, before you get into the meat of your schedule with Brigham Young, my goodness, uh, Texas Christian, and then you've got Florida State at the house before you go into the bulk of your ACC schedule with Louisville, Stanford, Duke, Pitt, BC, UVA, and Cal. So for me it is, can you get to October 12th undefeated? 
Because if they get to October 12th undefeated, that means they beat BYU, Texas Christian, and Florida State in Louisville. And then the back end of your schedule is Stanford, Duke, Pitt, BC, UVA, and Cal. It's not impossible to think about Southern Methodists winning 11 games, winning 10 games in their first year in the ACC because they really like what they have. They understand who they are and what they're punching up against. And I really believe that with a 1,000-yard back, say Jalen Knighton gets to that as opposed to 745 last year. He's averaged 5.5 yards per carry. If Kamar Wheaton can add a little bit more to that, and if you can get some outstanding receiver play from guys like Jordan Hudson, sky's the limit for that program. It, it, it really is. They're in a very cool spot. I'm excited for Southern Methodist football. I really think that Southern Methodist football deserves its national stage. And, and frankly, it's, it's brass. It is not a small thing to go into the ACC and go, we will forego the television revenue money because we know what this leap can mean for us over the next couple of years. So they've just got to hold up their end. they got to make sure that their alumni base of about 135000 continues to kick in. they got to make sure that Gerald J. Ford is no longer the quiet place that it once was, that, that Florida State is going to feel you when they come to town. And I think that game, you sell it out. You, you sell out to go win that football game, and then you try to come back with whatever you got left to beat Louisville, and then you let it see where it goes, right? Try to have to have some drop-off. That's the thing. How deep are they going to be? Because that's going to be the question for everybody. How deep are you? Can you be that guy? Can you be the dude that is coming off the third string and contributing in a meaningful way? Like, I'm all in on what Southern Methodists can be, and I really, 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 really want them to be good. We'll find out for sure. September 28th, but on week zero versus Nevada, go drop 60 and then let everybody know what time it is now that Southern Methodist is in the ACC.